the only way to survive in England is by being strong. Respect at one point dies and you need people to fear you. Did you have to be in a group to survive as well? To tell the truth, yes. The group is OTR. That was the first Albanian group and I created that. I'm a whole different animal. I'm a crazy breed. I'm gonna do something to you. Why, why the f you swear at them? Do you know who I am? I'm the guy. You don't swear at me, but these people on the internet today, bro, oh my God, I feel sorry for my kids. I have been living very good, very safe for a long time until I have some maniacs on, especially on TikTok right now. When I talk about my past, it almost feels like, was that really me? You know, it's, I'm, I'm completely a changed man. If you had a message for the 10 year old you? I'll tell them, um, I'll tell myself. So I just thought we'd start it up with when you came to the UK, when you landed. So you was we Woolwich, immigrated. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was, uh, um, we immigrated from the civil war um, in Albania in 1997. Right after the war, we, we um, arrived there um, 1st January of 1998. Like we started on the first day of the year. We immigrated through Italy with my family, mum, dad, my sister. Um, and um, actually my, my little cousin, rest in peace to Rims, he doesn't live anymore. He had a, a, little, he had a um, heart attack a few years ago and his mum, there were six of us. We immigrated through Italy and then from Italy we went to France. I remember um, from France we took a taxi, it was like six hour drive, we drove for hours. And I remember in a city called Calais, that's where we stopped. And there we had to wait for a train, we got a train and we, we stopped in Waterloo. The Eurostar, right? Yes, yeah. yes, under the tunnel. Yeah, that was uh, that's how we got to England, and uh, that's when everything started for me. Like that was a whole obviously, I, like being being in a, in a, in a country like Albania, coming from um, a rough situation that, that it was that time. Um, I experienced the whole year um, with hearing gunshots and grenades and kids finding, and literally, I'm not even making it up in every, you can ask anybody in every corner and every bush, you would find at least a bullet, a guns, all sorts of guns, a grenade. The depots had broke, people had broken into, civilians had broken into, and, and they, they would carry so much guns out from there. You can just find them anywhere. So if, they, if, if anybody wasn't exploding them or, or, or busting shots, you would find kids would find um, like dangerous weapons in, in uh, on the floor, and we had so many friends doing like kids obviously back then um, playing around with with um, guns and grenades and all, all of that, and it was just hearing horrible news everywhere. So basically, we've left cause, not because we needed to leave. My family, my situation was a bit different. We left for a better life in the sense that we was threatened by the everyday situation, not from anyone, but the everyday situation wasn't safe. Uh, you know, my, my, my parents have always been hardworking people. Um, we never needed to leave, but we left because of the situation was bad in Albania. Um, but because, I remember because um, England wasn't accepting back then uh, people from Albania because it was just a civil war. Normally civil wars, they, they normally, stop so when we went there we emigrated and we 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 was told as kids to say that we're from Kosovo oh really yeah so what was it like when you landed in South London what was your impression of the place uh, to tell you the truth I'm not gonna lie um as kids I, I have been bullied a little bit because of the racism like I I, I wouldn't I would I, I don't know if I should call it racism but you know when when kids tell you to go back to your country like I remember first first day in school, because like I was shy back then, obviously. And um, there were, I had a situation, for example, I had a situation where where I was in in, um, in the lunch break from school, and I got the plates and I sat down with a few friends, with a few um, classmates, and I said, "Don't sit here." I was like, "Why?" Because we don't want you here. You're not from this country. Go and sit alone. 
and coming from coming from um a place where me and my fr like fr kids but in here they they hold each other like this and they walk home from school to home and we give each other clothes and and bread and food it was a whole different um scenario for me i was like raw like i miss my home i need to go back i need to go back to them kind of friends i don't care if we're poor i don't care if we don't have much yeah. i just want to go there and feel love again like but obviously um i reckon that happens because there's so many cultures in one place and people can't find peace in somehow yeah we used to like for example like for my friends my, my I, I i i would say like my family had a better life I had the most toys, but my toys would never last because we all always share them and we always break them. It was that kind of love. And when when I would go home, I would say to my mom, "I'm very hungry. I need to make you. I need you to make me a sandwich, like I'm gonna eat for three or four people." And she would know I'm trying to give them to my friends. <laughs> so because I couldn't feed all of them, I'll go back and say, "Mom, I dropped. I'm gonna have a free more." So that I made sure we're all eating, like all the friends. So going back there as a kid, because we're talking about, I was I was only 10 years old, 11 years old. So that was a bit bit of a hard, harsh start for me. And then obviously I learned to like, this is life. I'm not going to go back home anytime soon because obviously England was a much, much better place in, than Albania. It was a safer I, place, but was it a more harsh place? I thought it was safe. It was safe from guns. Mm -hmm. It was safe from grenades finding on the floor. But as we all know, it's not that safe. It was never safe. Yeah. I was afraid to walk from home to school without being stopped from gangs trying to rob you for your Nike shoes or any kind of small chain you get for your birthday or let alone phones and that. And if you fight back, you're getting hurt really bad. So in a way, it wasn't safe. I fought, I, I fought, we fought because our uncle was there before us. So he was like, yeah, it's different. But you know, when you're old, you don't get to go through yeah. hoods and stuff. You, you, you choose your, your path a, a, bit, a bit more. Yeah, it's a different lifestyle. We, we, we all know that. Because when I go now to England, I was like, how comes I never see trouble anymore? It's because I'm old, I'm, I'm not around. <laughs> you know? I was like, why, yeah. why do young kids complain it's hard? I was like, where is it? But obviously, like the youngsters make all the all the madness in in England. So, yeah, that's how it was. Do you remember how you reacted to that, or how you like? I actually cried. Yeah, I cried because um, I've never faced that kind of. I I don't know. I I don't want to be too harsh about it. But back then, I was like, why, why, why do kids? Because I knew I was an old guy. I knew I was a youngster. I was like, how can my generation say stuff like that? Like, I wouldn't even think of that. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I cried and I went to um to another table where I went and sat with the, we sat with these boys because I thought they they I thought these boys are more like um they didn't look as like the the, the gangster little kids. They looked at the quiet kids, but these quiet kids happened to be the ones that didn't want me around. So when I went to the other table to the more rougher kids. Um, they, they, they showed me love and I was like, hold on, I need to wake up the, the, the young beast because when I was back home before I went to England, I remember myself training from six years old and I was a wild kid. I was a tough kid. I was doing training every day, like a little maniac. Fighting like... Uh, like I would train, I would train doing 100 press ups every morning, 100 sit ups every morning. The same thing at night time. It was a time where, where where Bruce Lee came out, them kind of movies. So we all had that kind of dream. We all wanted to be a, a superhero in in a type of way. So where I lived in a, in a small village from here, we used to like run from home to a, a, a hill and come back every morning. Obviously, I used to I used to follow the oldest. We had a few oldest who loved training. So. You know, we we born in a certain way. We, we we will die like that for the rest. Like we will live and die like that. I reckon it, my father used to be a wrestler when I was when he was young, and I think I take it from him. So I've always been the type of person to train all my life. Even as we talk right now, I train every day. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Lucky me, I live like a sportsman, but I'm an artist. I've never I've never done obviously I've done a few things during life because of being the most successful artist in, in Balkan and, and not having any like doing anything wrong is not possible. I have done but like 
pe people who know me, they're like, bro, you don't drink? I've never drank. You don't smoke? I've never smoked. You don't do any type of drugs? I don't do no drugs. I reckon it's helped me because I, I used to, like, um, obviously train a lot all my life. And I was like, when, when, when them boys showed me love, getting back to that, that conversation, I was like, I think I need to wake up that kid again. Because when I went there, I was a lost puppy. Mm. I was a bird with no home, so I didn't know where I was. I didn't know how to get around. I would have a hard time to go out the house and find my way back. It was a, a new environment for me, so so that was really hard. So I stayed about two or three years without doing nothing. Yeah, I was just crying, wanted to go back most of the time. Every New Year's, my friends from my class back home would write me um, Christmas um, cards. I would do the same thing. But then the next year, half of them would write to me. And the next year, it got, just got smaller and smaller. And that's when I thought, you know what? Since I'm here, I'm going to pay attention for here. And I reckon about two or three years, I, went, I started boxing. And that's when I found the real me. Like I went to um, St. Peter's Boxing Club in in, um, in Woolwich, and that's when I, that's when I thought, yeah, I can live here, because I I really got to do something that I really wanted to do. And did that help you then in the streets as well oh, with yeah, the gangs that were those bothering you? You know, I'm I'm holding myself so much back because I don't want to talk in front of the camera, but can I not? Can I be real? Yes. The only way to survive in England is by being strong. There's no other way. There's literally no other way. Respect at one point dies, and you need people to fear you. It's sad, but that's the real truth. Is there's so many cultures and so many races that it's 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 almost impossible to blend in with everyone, and it's 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 a headache trying to deal with everyone. So the only way, an easy way, is to be the strongest, and nobody's gonna mess with you. That was the only way, that's the only way I found peace. I had to show a certain people, don't do it, or you, or I'm gonna have to pretend, protect myself. And the only way to protect myself is through the violent way. I, I, like I've tried, I, I don't believe in violent, and I don't believe two wrongs makes a right. But there's so much a human can take, it's unbelievable. And we all, we've all lived there, nobody can say any different. We know how rough the streets get in England, especially in Southeast, yeah. it's like, it's. I don't know, maybe it's changed a little bit now, but I'm talking about from 97 and to 2005, six, when I was there, nothing funny, nothing to love about South East. So, summer of knife crime, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. And yeah, that's, that's, that did help me. That did help me get along. That helped me fight, you know, protect myself. And the thing is, when you're a boxer, you never look for trouble. Have you noticed? I don't know. I've never heard boxers being bullies, never. And because you're raised in that kind of that kind of circle, somehow it does make you a bit like them as well, because you're always around that. You're always around them people. And at one point, I'm not saying I'm an angel. I've been an angel all my life. I, maybe I did do something I wasn't supposed to do. And obviously now, if you ask me, I'm like, why the hell did I do it? But I was a youngster back then, and and I'm not proud of it. But Living in a place where you always hear fight and stab and do and blah blah blah. Maybe I did do something, uh, something's wrong as well. But that I, I was, I was growing up in that place. It's not like I learned it from some. I learned it there and I executed it there. Did you have to be in a group to survive as well? To tell the truth, yes, yes, I did. The group is OTR. That was the first Albanian group, and I created that in two thousand and one. Um, it's called On the Run, and we've been in in newspapers so many times and news and for fighting, but that was the only way to survive. There was no other chance. There was no other chance to survive. You couldn't be nice and make sense and talk sense sensible to people because they don't want to hear it. You walk through the you walk through the bus through the road, and and it's like yo, who, who are you looking at? I'm like you, I'm not looking at you. Are, are you talking to me like that? So there's no escape. My, my, he's talking to you if for one purpose. If you reply back, he's gonna. Who are you talking to? If you don't reply, it's like I'm talking to you, not talking to me. So, what do you want me to do? There is no escape, and it's funny when you think about it now. But it's dangerous, and it's 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 it's, it's a, I, I don't know. It's sad because because these people are young. I'm not talking about old people. I'm talking about youngsters. 
and they're learning from the olders and and I don't know when it's ever going to stop. So OTR that starts with just you and that was about ten of us at the beginning. And it was just you were all from the same community. Because ten of us, we were all boxers, and we would literally go out all the time, just the ten of us. Mm. There was no touching us anymore, because ten boxers is stronger than the one whole army, you know. Especially people that um found home somewhere else. We 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 found I found another brother there that I never had. And so did he, and so did he, and 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 all, and all of us. And luckily, lucky for us, is we lived very very close to each other. We all lived around Plumstead and Woolwich, so we would all go out every day. We would go boxing every day. We would go school together. So it was almost impossible to touch from our age people, at least from from the other groups, because groups existed before we came. We didn't make any groups. I learned in school that um oh it's cool to 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 make a tag for yourself at 13 years old. So, you know, we I, I went through all the procedures. I was trying to grab, I learned how to graffiti. It was just, that's how people live in England, where here in Albania is a different story, in Switzerland is a different story, in Italy is a different story, in England is a different story. So around that age, I learned, oh, there's gangs, but all these gangs, they all got, got um, a, a, tag, a tag name. They, they don't want to be called by their names. I, I didn't know why. But it just seemed cool, so I named myself Noisy. Actually, I actually was trying to find a name for myself, and the teacher called me, you're so <laughs> noisy. You're a refugee, you're supposed to be quiet in school. Really? And it touched me, and, I, and I, we called, it was a new word for me. I didn't even know knew what it mean. So, and then I, graf- I, I wrote it, and I didn't know how to spell it, so I wrote it Noisy with a Z. And that's how I still have it. Noisy with a Z is, but it's, it's with an S. And so that's how I, I kept my name from the teacher. And I, I thank you for that. <laughs> and um, yeah, it did save me from the street, man. 100%. Yeah. And obviously the, the group got bigger and bigger and bigger because I, I was one of the first Albanians in, in England. Uh, I think my whole school, we were just two of us when it first started. And then I reckon in about a few years, there was about 60 Albanians. Because more started to come in, more started to come in, much more. In '97, there wasn't a lot of us. I was alone for a good two years. Why I le- why I led the whole pack? I'll tell you why. Because you know when you you go there as a young kid at 10 years old, you get to learn the small things that when you come as a 15, you don't learn these kind of things. You learn how to dress, you learn how to talk, you don't have an accent, you learn how to be more English. But when you come at 15 year old, 15 year old as an Albanian, you've lived in Albania for 15 years, or you come there as a 16 year old, or you come as a 17, you don't learn the small things. You don't know how to graffiti. You don't know. You don't know. You know. The, you don't know the cool stuff you do as a teenager. But you, you already come like nearly a man there. So that's why I was leading because I could talk English properly. I was dressed better than them. I had a better haircut than them. I knew about gangs. I knew about the small details that people didn't know when they come when they freshly come from Albania. So that's why they would follow me. So that's how I ended up making a group. And I told them, yo, listen, if you don't, if you don't want to go through through f-ing war, you need to. You, we all need to be together. Otherwise, go and try and walk home alone at seven, or when you finish school, let's see what's gonna happen to you. They've all done it. They've all been robbed. They've all been stabbed. They've all been chased to home. They've all been waited outside the house. When he comes out, we're gonna. F- so I was like, you've tried it. It's not a nice thing, is it? We need to get together and make sure this doesn't happen to us. That's how OTR got created, from being able to not being bullied. And be safe as and well. And be safe, 100%, 100%, yeah. And then, and what, when did the music come in? Music for me, you know, um, in a ghetto like um, Southeast, because I would call the whole place ghetto. I don't, I don't see, I didn't see nothing nice about that place. I didn't see nice in the sense that um, luxury, nice. Um, obviously, because when you come as an immigrant, the, the council does put you in a in in an area where where everyone is there. It's not going to send you in a in a good place, is it? And mix you with the proper people that live been living the the, the nice lives. And it's not going to send you to obviously to a private re- resident. It's going to send you where everyone is. So the only thing that was free in Southeast was play a beat and rap. So in my school. Or you know, all the black boys would would rap every 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 lunch, and everyone get together. And funny enough, that time Eminem had uh, was like one of the baddest rappers alive, and um, he was like the hope of everyone, especially the white kids. So I was like, wow, uh, you know, I I didn't even know Eminem was 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 white for like six months, because I I didn't have TV at home. So I didn't know how he looked like. We would just listen to his music. I never knew he was white. And when I heard he was white, I was like, oh my God, wow. 
Um, music was like a side dish. My main dish was boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Boxing was my main. I, I was. I was. I, I, you wanted I was to be a boxer. Gifted. Yeah. I wanted to be a boxer, but then I made a mistake in 2005. I done a street fight in Swanley, but it was so big the street fight. Wait, these one of these unofficial ones where you yeah. gather up and yeah, then... yeah, I was the champion, bro. I was the champion for two years. You, there's videos. There's 16 videos on, on YouTube, and I have 16 knockouts. So you came before the whole MMA, like all of that oh, yeah, 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 stuff yeah, yeah. that came out. Was, 2005. Yeah. I done my first fight, but it, it became so viral with with a, with a, with a. Uh, it, it went to the to the um, it went to the boxing federation and they burned my license. I couldn't really box professionally. Yeah, and then after that, my uh, Steve, my uh, t uh, like uh, my boxing coach, coach was was so um, he was so tough at me. He was like, "Why did you do it, man? You were so gifted, man. Like, like you was." Why did you do it? Oh, for the money. Yeah, I got five hundred pounds. I was I was sixteen years old. Um, a friend of mine was like, yo, bro, yo, like, he obviously, one of my best friends now, as we talk as well, he was like, yo, he goes to me, um, you know, the, you know, you know, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, I know him. He goes, you know, they organize, like, fights in the field. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, they organize fights. You don't know who, who's going to fight you, but if you win, you, you, if you win, they'll pay you 500 pounds. I was like, I said, but how do I know who's fighting, who, who I'm fighting? He goes, you just don't. I was like, can I just go and see? And when I saw the first ones fight before me, I was like, is this how everyone fights? It was just b basic fighters, like in the road, no skills, nothing. I was like, I'll fight. And they find me one right now. So they found me, if they found me a bouncer. I'd like to say that's the old school, all people yeah. gathered around yeah, and everything. I, I destroyed that boy in, in a few seconds. I was, a, I was. I was a good fighter. I'm still a good fighter, um, but um, I destroyed him. I was like, wow, 500 pounds. And I didn't know how, where to take that money after because how am I going to send that money home? My dad would kill me if, if he knew that I'm making money from, from street fights and stuff. So, and after that, every, every month they would fight me fights until it got to a point where fighters wouldn't turn up anymore because they knew I'm going to be there. So it may be, there would be like two or three months, they wouldn't fight me anymore. They wouldn't turn up until they start organizing me real fights now, like crazy fights. And I've still got the longest fight in the world, 27 minutes nonstop. Oh. Yeah, it's on YouTube. And no one's ever no, no one's ever fought for that long. And then I done one more fight after that and I just stopped because I came back to Albania. But music was a side dish. It was never a main dish. Almost like impossible to make it back then in music. Coming from a family that never had anything to do with music. My family has always been working, hard working people who didn't have nothing to do with music. So I was like, how the hell am I gonna be a musician? Where sports, it's easier. And you can go train, it's all, and, and it's all up to you if you wanna make it or not. If you, if you wanna make it, really make it, you go and train every day, never skip anything, and eventually you will get there. Cause that's how easy it is. Where music is not, it's not like that. You have to be lucky. You need to know the, the certain people. Plus, back then there wasn't a lot of studios. I didn't know what a studio was. So for me, music was like going in the corner and rapping with the boys, making freestyle MC, blah blah blah. That, but that don't think that was gonna take me anywhere. And yeah, that's how it was. So you go back to Albania. Mm. Why did you go back? What was the story there? I told my friends like, yeah, I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna be the biggest artist in Albania ever seen, because I already, I already took everything I thought I needed back then from England. And I always say to people like the reason why who I am today is because of England. To being able to take take all the swag, being able to grow with that kind of music, people listen to there, and and um, all type of garage, MC, dance, all reggae. For Albania, that was new. Bringing that thing in Albania was new. The way I was dressed, it was new. Um, my image was new. Not a lot of Albanians looked like me. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna go and try it. But I strongly believed that I'm gonna become somebody. Everyone was like, bro, why would you wanna go back right when we are becoming, we're passing the, like the, the teen age and we, we can make money? 
gang, gangways. I don't know how, but I knew it for a fact it wasn't going to be nothing nice. Making money. So there's what, selling drugs or? Uh, of course, selling yeah. drugs. We didn't, we didn't, because I got excluded from school, you know, like that protecting yourself is, is okay until it gets really violent. And we got excluded from school because it just got really nasty at one point, like, because it doesn't stop just because you put a name in school and tell, you, tell people, look, don't, because we are tough now. It doesn't stop. Someone will eventually try something. And when they try something and I protect myself, maybe the way I protected myself was too much. And it got out of hand. And maybe the teacher doesn't want to know whose fault it was. What he wants to know is why the hell would you do that kind of thing? He doesn't care whose fault it was. Why would you turn around like that? And you could try to explain to them as much as you want. Yeah, but he started it. Doesn't matter. Did people start coming for OTR as well? Because they, if they see you're a big group and you're respected, then other people are going to want to... OTR was almost, almost untouchable from other groups. I don't think anybody was... Because we was in for the ride or die because we was, we was out numbers compared to other, other groups. But we, 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 we wouldn't step down for nobody. So that's what kept us, that's why we was untouchable. Like most of us was all fighters. Because I told them like, if you don't know how to fight in England, you're, you're, you're dead meat. But others, didn't they, try, they didn't try and ride out, catch someone on their own or anything like that? We would have moments like that. There were, like a lot of people would know the consequences. And, and I, I told them, well, I told them like, don't ride alone, you know? And obviously we didn't have like, people coming for us like like we own people mad money and it, it wasn't anything we, we were talking about youngsters yeah we're talking about teenagers we're to, not talking about mafia we're not talking about well-organized crimes we're talking about youngsters on streets and if they catch you you're fine if they don't it's it's, it's a minor thing but because that we had power and they had power it, people could get hurt but we're not talking about nothing serious, like well-organized criminals and when you were getting older though did you think it would go that way Hundred percent, a hundred percent. I know for a fact now. If I was to live in England, I would not have been a musician. If something would have changed, if I would have away from boxing, if I wouldn't become a boxer and I became a good boy, I probably would have been a chef because I love cooking. Um, and it would have changed my whole life. I doubt it. Knowing myself, I doubt it. I'm always for the big goals. I'm always for the big things. I probably would have been doing drugs. But I wouldn't like to. Because I saw it. At the end, people start fearing us because we start to get older and, and big people start fearing us. Because, you know, the older you get, the serious the things become. But fearing us, respecting us because we wouldn't bully people for no reason. They would like, they would know that we're, we're the real deals, but that's how it is. You're young, you become old, people respect you or they don't, and then you just eventually leave it. And we respect the youngsters after. It's just a, it's a matter of chain. It, it's like that in England. Whether I was there, I wasn't there, I found it like that. It's not like I made them rules. Do you know, do you know what I mean? I, I just blended in with the rest. But the only thing I've done is created my own group that don't be touched. Don't bully nobody. There's no need to. There's food for everyone. And I learned from, from my oldest as well. Like, I have a lot of English friends there from England. And I just took it all from them. Because, you know, um, in boxing, and especially in street fighting, I've, uh, I've, in, in that, them kind of places, I've met a lot of crazy people. And I'm really good friends with them as we speak. Really good friends. And they are nothing to play about with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah real, real, real Gs. And they're all, they're all English. And so you, you come back to Albania and... You're ahead of everyone, really, by the sounds of it. In my mind, I was ahead of everyone. Yeah. But in here, there was rappers, there was... They are very successful. And when I would listen to their lyrics and their flows, I was like, these people are so <laughs> Because they had no idols to listen to. They had nobody... They would just create something where I had a lot of people to listen to back then. And when I would try to do English, like, MCings in here, people would be like, whoa! Like, I was like, mm. I took it all from England, you know, and I knew how to do, like, the fast MC. And then when I would show them that type of music that I like, they'll be like, we didn't even know they exist. For example, I'll tell you one, 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 one thing. I fed dancehall music in Albania. Nobody knew about dancehall music. Nobody knew about reggae. 
I'm talking about youngsters, obviously olders as well. Um, nobody knew about, for example, English swag. Nobody. Because not a lot of people have turned back from England when, when once they've left, they're still out there. And mind you, I've gone there in the age where, the perfect age where you can just get the best out of the culture as you grow in and left when I was 20. So I, I, I've only stayed there one decade. For, from 10 to 20, it's, it's the most important thing like where, 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 where you, you learn so many things. And if you're born in the right, right place, uh, sorry, if you've grown up, in, grown up in the right place, it's a blessing. So that's what happened to me. I got so many things from England that I still do them as we speak today. Especially the music, the boxing, the um, uh, dedication. You know, when you do it, you have to do it right. And when you promise something, take it to the end. Don't stop. That's, these are the kind of positive things I took from England. And even being able to go to school for that, that much time that I was able to go to, that's my biggest blessing. England has the, one of the best school systems in the world. And people are lucky to go to school in England. Probably don't realise it a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you don't because as a, as a, as a, as a kid, you, 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 you're too busy dealing with stupid stuff that other kids um, the cause. Like, for example, I had to deal with the kids telling me, don't sit with me because you're a refugee. I didn't have the power. I didn't even want to know what the teacher's telling me. I was thinking the whole day that day, why the hell did he say that to me? I went to that table because I thought they're the quiet kids. I should have gone there. To the, to the bad boys, because they're the ones who showed me love. And I was like, right, this is where I belong. But I only went there because I was I couldn't speak English. And you know when I couldn't speak English properly? I'm a shy kid. I used to be a shy kid. I'm probably a little bit shy now as well. I wouldn't say words unless I knew how, I knew how to say them right. I'm like that. Like, I don't want to sound stupid and not say, say the words properly. So I wouldn't even speak. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit with the quiet kids. They're not going to mind me. The first thing without sitting down, they said to me, don't say you're a refugee, go back to your country, we don't want you. I was like, who says that? Why are these people, why are these young kids grown up with this kind of hate? Like, I don't know if I would call it hate, but it's like, that's, that's carrying on your shoulders so much drama, boy. Like, that's from parents, though. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, it's, yeah, 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 it's parents. But again, it's, I wouldn't blame sometimes people calling us, names in England. You need to understand, oh, in England, everywhere and around the world. You know how Albanians don't have really, such a really great name? Because apart from me and a few, maybe a, a few more families that have left Albania because to live a better life, in a sense that we had to leave because we was threatened, the bullets flying everywhere for that time. Sometimes most of the people who immigrate leave Albania is not the city people. It's the people from mountains where you guys was, Kukus, Harsi, Debra, where my dad is from, um, maybe people from, from, from deep south. You know, we, we wasn't very lucky to be educated. And, 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 and um, as, as the whole world knows, you know, we was in co communism for 50 years. And that's the reason, that's the reason we're suffering all this all these madness now. Uh, Albanians are not being able to see the world. We was told we was the best, but we was the worst. And once we saw the world, it was like, oh my God, we've been lied to. And, and because we've been so hungry, and now we're in the middle of a forest full of fruits, we just want to eat everything. And, some, and, and because we act so rough, we, we might even step on good food, trying to eat everything. But why would you do that? And, and this is the problem now. Um, we've, we've, as you might, may have noticed, coming to Albania is not such a bad thing what you might have expected because of the things that Albania has done in Europe. And you probably think when you go back in, in Albania, I mean, when you go to Albania, it's going to be a whole chaos. People eating each other, people doing madness, people killing. But it's not like that. It's, 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 it's a very safe place. It's always been a safe place after, the, obviously, the civil war. But it's just us Albanians outside the, the, the country. We just didn't know how to maybe, um, I would say, act, not everyone, I'm not saying everyone, but they're loud, we're a bit loud, we like to like be a bit loud. But for example, if you tell my dad, I'll give you the whole England, go and live in England, I'll give you the whole England, you can have it, it's all yours, you wouldn't go. 
And there's a lot of people like my dad. He doesn't, he doesn't want to leave. He loves the place. He loves the weather. He loves the food. He loves his friends. He loves his family. And we, 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 we really, we really trying to work on that. Um, I, as you may have seen, like the kids of the kids of the people who've immigrated long time ago, they've blended in a bit more. There's not as as naughty as we was. My generation was as Albanians. I've noticed that in Italy, for example, because I travel a lot doing shows and um, meeting people like they've been in, for example, immigrated for 20 or 30 years. The kids have grown up at their 18s. I know I wasn't like that 18 years old. I was a wild kid. I was a crazy kid. I wasn't doing school, going to school and learning, learning anything about mechanics or any type of thing. I just knew how to survive in the jungle, not be bit by snakes, not being caught in groups and just trying to make money somehow. That's how I grew, because that's how, that's how, that's how England, that's what England offered me. That's what my area offered me. So now it's, it's, I think it's changed maybe, or maybe I've just gone old. Maybe a bit of both. Maybe a bit of both, yeah. You've become very successful. Like, what's that been like? Or like, you become sex successful here and then it's like, there's lights on you, there's eyes on you from England, from here. You know what the crazy thing is? As soon as I came back from England, I became successful. 20 years old. But mind you, you need to understand something. I'll, people had known me from being a boxer without becoming a musician here because YouTube had been popped off. Because Albanians, when, when there's a star somewhere or, or when, when there's like a, a footballer somewhere or a boxer somewhere, we love to make him so big without even being so big. We're just so patriotic. We love the fact because we've never had it. And when we have it, we're trying to make him, oh, he's the biggest. Oh, look at this. He's a boxer in England. Oh, he's a street fighter. Look at, because uh, fighting is a whole, it, it attracts so much attention. And the funny thing is that I had every fight was a win by knockout. So it, there was all in YouTube, the fights. And I already had a, a bit of attention. Obviously, I was doing music. So every music I was doing as a rapper, you know, rappers always want to talk about, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this, blah, 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 blah. And people would believe that because he's a fire. So for you, it's the character, right? 100%. And, and it was easier for me because of my street fight, because of my past, because of living in a, in a place like England. Um, and the thing is, you have footages as well that make people would believe it. So when I say, yo, I'll come and f you up in a rap song, they'll be like, no, you would do that because he's done it before and and I've had some issues in Albania with other rappers because you know taking people's food being the most successful people are going to talk shit, but people wasn't understanding something in Albania rappers in Albania they wasn't understanding that I'm not an artist bro I come from a <laughs> I come from a jungle like England people would think oh England is the safe place here but they don't know what it's like to walk in southeast Woodage every day to go home through gangs every day and being able to survive then create my whole whole little um whole little for example um army and lifestyle and coming here was like i'm a whole different animal i'm a crazy breed these people are too soft for me and it's funny because you expect people in here to be more crazy you wouldn't expect a kid coming from England and being more crazy than everyone here. But trying to survive there has made me like that. So when I came here now, these artists are talking about blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I'm like, you know what I'm going to say this? Song? You, you, I don't believe you talk. And I've said that. And then, but me coming from a place where I came from, when they replied back to me, I was used to that instinct that when I see you I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something to you. Why, why the f you swear at him? Do you know who I am? I'm the guy. You don't swear at me. So maybe these are the kind of things that I've done wrong, like through my career. And I have, um, um, I've had like conflicts with other rappers here, and didn't really end up really well for them. But talking about in a fighting way, nothing, nothing crazy. So is they, you release a track, they release a track. They release a track or. Or, or they'll say, oh, when I catch him, you're gonna do this. And when they see me, what are you gonna do, bro? Do you, like, you know, you already know my lifestyle. Why would you say like that?
because you know you're not going to do nothing. Because I came here with all my friends from England, we was all fighters, and we still are. And then one of the things that's like, that's got picked up in the UK is the whole OTR Helbanians thing. Can you explain yeah. it to like, what? You know what, funny enough, the, 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 them boys, um, I didn't know them until a few years ago. Um, because they had beef, rap beef with one of my um, young, young, youngers in my group. And I really wasn't understanding the situation, what was happening, because I was too, pa I was paying attention too much in, in, in this side of Europe. I didn't really know the, the rap scene in England anymore because I was, I was banned from England. I couldn't go in England for 13 years, so I didn't know what was happening whatsoever. Wait, why couldn't you go back in England for 13 years? I was, I, was, I had left, I had left, and then when you apply in the UK embassy, you can't apply again for 10 years. When you get refused, they will, they will, they will not let you apply, apply for a visa for 10 years. Even though you was living for 10 years? Yeah, I didn't have papers. I came back without having any papers. Okay. Yeah, I was a asylum seeker. I was an immigrant. So I, I asked them to go back. So they gave me a piece of paper just to go back and never come back again. Unless I would find a way to come back. <laughs> but I didn't want to do that because, like I said, I became famous and I didn't miss England at all. One, I didn't even miss England one bit because I was traveling all over the world this, this, the moment I came. But so while you're over here, that's when the Helbanians, they start talking about Them it. boys are young. The, the, I, I would reckon without disrespect, they followed, because OTR was the first group and there was another group and then they faded out and now there's another group. Um, I hope they make it in music and get away from all this madness because there's nothing pretty about that. Um, I've seen that, they, that they've been involved in like, um, um, in, in, in a few crimes, but obviously I just hope somebody um, like old from their group tells them, yo, there's nothing pretty about that lifestyle. And, um, but, but I reckon the, 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 the singers of, of that group, they're not, they don't do the, they don't do the drugs and stuff. It's only their friends. So I have the kind, the same kind of friends. I, I, I always, but my, my friends, like most of them are our businessmen. We've stepped away from the life. We have businesses. A long time stepped away from that lifestyle. Because it has changed. Because like the drill artists that you get coming up now in London, it's all about authenticity, and people are doing follow through of like it's not just talking anymore, right? Yeah, but it's not just music who does that, man. You live in an area, you're going to follow your... Because the first thing that happens, you tag yourself, noisy, and there's a, obviously an older noisy, and there's a younger noisy and a tiny noisy. So even without music, people do these kind of things. Music is not the only thing that people follow. It's the lifestyle. I promise you it's not music. I didn't know anything about... I'm not saying it's the music. I guess the thing that I'm saying, which is... What is maybe different is you've now got people checking, do you know what I mean, whether the guys have got the follow through or like people are following it in a different way maybe than what they used to where if someone released a song and you know they can talk amongst each other but now you've got people on the internet that are like following the scoreboards and all of that kind of business. I don't know, like I'm nobody to tell them if, if it's right or wrong first of all. Um, obviously it's in, in numbers, in viewers it works, um, the circumstances what can I say? It is is it's uh it's up to them how much they talk. Music is about, especially rap music. Personally, I think it's about being able to express yourself and letting anger out of you. T talking about like the things that would bother you. Talk, I reckon like it's like a, a secret diary that you talk to somebody that you don't you you, you trust a lot and, and you express all your feelings. It should be beautiful. It should be beautiful so you can make people relate. You can make people enjoy time while driving or going to work or, or doing something. But if your truth is a bit dark, then there's nothing wrong with saying it. But it's music, man. It's not, you shouldn't go as much as I'll stab you or do you remember when I killed you? Uh, that's a bit too far for me. Like, I reckon, I reckon is that the wrong kids have access to going to the studio and being able to record. But now life is like so easy, you can just record a voice voice on your phone and add a beat into it. 
it's become so easy to make a song and God knows what kind of what kind of song could become a hit nowadays it's dangerous I don't know do I listen to them no I, I personally don't like drill music because it's so limited it's so so limited all you can talk about is gangs and streets but how much can you talk about gangs and streets and guns how, what are you going to say uh, that's why I'm, I'm me I'm an artist, I'm not just a rapper. I've I've made so much music, different kind of music. I'm not just a rapper. Rap is too small for me in my region. I've done, you name it, I've done pop, I've done dance, I've done rap, I've done, R not r and I've done like love songs. I've done against the government, I, what I thought was wrong, what I, how I thought they should change things. And I have a big impact to people. Um, and now, especially now, I really be careful what I talk about. But you, there has been some risk to you, right? People have come and, you know, tried to do stuff to you. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Not not even too long ago. Old beef. We wasn't pushed enough. Old beef has escalated to a point where, people, like, we got shot. I got shot. Um, a friend of mine got shot. <sighs> like, I, I I never hold weapons, bro. Like, I don't like weapons. I'm like I'm the type of person. If if we fight, it's just hands. I don't hold a knife. I don't know. I don't know a screwdriver. I don't hold guns. I don't hold nothing. I'm, I'm just on my hands. But obviously, not everyone has the same mindset as me. So, this old beefs have gone to a point which has gone too far. Um, yeah, nothing to be proud about. Nothing to like. Uh, nothing to like. Um, make other people follow your footsteps. You know, I, I hated myself being in that situation because that wasn't at the very beginning, that was like in the middle of my career. So I was like, why did it happen? And most of the time when we fight, it's not even about me, it's about my friends. I didn't even start the fight there. It was, I was on the phone on the toilet and when I came out, there was already a fight. I was like, I happened to be in the middle of everything, but uh, I'm not complaining. It is what it is. Is it stressful though, having that? Nah, no, no. Obviously, if, if you live that kind of lifestyle all the time, but you need to understand something. I have been living very good and very safe for a long time until I have some <laughs> maniacs on, especially on TikTok right now. Some stupid people have been able to get access to the world through TikTok. And it's ridiculous. Like, it's so fing <laughs> sad. TikTokers gave a window to idiots. And I didn't know Albania had so many idiots until TikTok came around. It is ridiculous. I don't know where to start. And I don't even want to talk about it. But people who are watching this, like my guy there is doing that. They don't know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's an everyday constant, 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 constant. It's, it is so sad and it's damaging. That's the real threat. Yeah. Yeah, being able to look at someone talk for 30 minutes stupid stuff rather than because if you don't like a song you can just skip a f song but you have little kids bro i'm not saying i've been an angel but i've never been that kind of an idiot in my life yeah. my thing made sense if i was aggressive i was forced to be aggressive because of the situation and the circumstances and whatever trying to survive in the jungle blah 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 but i was never a fucking idiot I was never ignorant. I know how to be polite. I know how to say thank you and I know how to say I'm sorry. But these people on the internet today, bro, oh my God, I feel sorry for my kids when I, when I, when, when, where they're gonna grow up. And I don't know, I don't know. I feel like going to the mountain and doing a, a big f***ing wall and living there with my, my kids. Never let them see, there's nothing pretty out there. No phones, for sure, for a very long time. <laughs> 100%. Thank God I can live like that. Thank God I have all the opportunities to live without technology. Well, because now you're you're a big businessman, right? You've got a lot. Talk me through some of the stuff that you've got. I have a lot of businesses, to tell you the truth. Yes, very true. I have a hotel in Tirana. It's called The Crown. One of the best b boutique hotels. I have uh, this restaurant. I have the Zins restaurant. I have a, a luxury apartments, rent. And I have the biggest brand, clothing brand in Albania. And we're talking about big, big brand. We sell more than any other brand in Albania. I don't care who you are, Nike, Adidas. In Albania, nobody sells more than, more than my brand. 
it's not very expensive it's not very cheap it's somewhere in the middle class so it's, it's it's doing great and these restaurants as you might have seen yourself they're not small things they're yeah. big things um yes i take it from my dad i do a lot of business um and i don't stop for nothing so that's why i'm not around stupid th things anymore when i've talked about my past it almost feels like was that really me you know is I'm, I'm a completely changed man what do you mean because obviously there's a bit pop up about otr like in the press back in the day it's all quite uh I don't know sensationalized kind of reporting and stuff what when you see that what do you think of that or when you saw it i guess there's been less of it recently like, like i said it almost feels like it wasn't me it almost feels like why can't i remember it i, I just it, it's almost like a snow white story in my head because i've lived a free kind of three moments when i was when i was born until 10 years old and then that little switch going to england from that to that and then from england till now so like 17 years after i've left england i've been a, a very famous artist so because i've been living every day um going to sleep late going crazy shows the biggest tours in my life thousands of people screaming your name blah blah and it's been for 17 years like that I've been on top from the first moment I came in here and I'm still on top right now. So I'm a very busy, very, very busy guy. So I have forgotten so much about England. You know what? I'm just telling you, I'm just cutting through bits and bobs because my stories in England, I would need long winter nights to tell you everything about them. Like, but I'm just skipping through them now. And then most of them, are, I've forgotten about them. And, and, and I'm, I'm very sure I've forgotten things that are not very important to me. That, like, I, I literally have to wake up to 30 different things every morning and repair to them. You name it. Five, six different <laughs> um, uh, businesses where I have to talk to so many managers and so many staff and so many... And let alone, I'm a very busy um, artist. Like, my, my biggest income comes from um, music even though I have so many big businesses, still, yeah, my biggest biz my biggest income is from music. And noise is still very hot as, as an artist. So having to be stay on top with music as well, all the time feeding people, it's, it's very stressful. That's why I'm, 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 I don't really remember things too much. If you ever had a message for the 10 year old you, when you're not in, in yeah, what would I would it be? tell him, don't mind the bullying. It's okay. Um, I'll tell them. Um, I'll tell myself. Um, I've been called a lot of names when I was young, so I'll be like, "It's okay. Like it will pass. At one point, it will pass, and you'll be, you'll be fine." Obviously, I'm not allowed to tell my future, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell myself, well, like go train, train all the time. You know, as as much as people want, as much as parents want people to feed their brain, they forget that you need to, f like a kid needs to be fit as well, not just fit here, it needs to be fit on the body. So me as a parent, when I have my son, my first son, I hope very soon, the first thing my son is going to do is parallel with school is going to gym every day. Every day, the moment he has a break from school, he has a break from gym. And I'm not talking about lifting, just exercise. Every day of his life, he needs to be prepared because he helps you so much. I wasn't very talented in music, but because I was very fit, I was able to get things done by force, by power. I was, I'm not the best rapper in Albania. I just can stay a lot. I can stay awake all night and finish it. That only happens because I'm fit. That only happens because my body can take it. Otherwise, I would have been just a normal, normal one. My, what I'm gonna tell my kids, what 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 I'm gonna try to do do like do for my kids is first of all, realize what I like, and there's a very high chance they're gonna like that too, because I wasn't told by my parents that yo you might like cooking because my dad was a chef, because my parents were too busy trying to make food for me, bring food home. Um, I think I'm well educated from life enough to to know that my kid is going to be a sportsman. I'm not too sure if he's going to be a musician. 
Because I'm telling you, I didn't make music because I was talented. I just made music because I saw a way out. Escape. I reckon it's a very high chance of, chance of him becoming a good cook. So these are the kind of things I want to feed him first. Parallel school, he's, he's doing exercises, gym, everything. So I don't want to have a message to the kids as much as I want to have a message to the parents. The reason why the kids become who they are is most of the time because of what they take from home. Because that's where they spend most of the time. And take care of your kids because a school, a teacher in school is not going to take care of your kids. They tell you in school, go send them to school to become successful. The teacher is not even successful. That's why he's a teacher. The success comes from home. There's a mindset. So treat your kids right. You need to know what you what what you love. As a me, like I said, I love cooking. I know for a fact my kid is going to have a very high chance of him loving cooking as well, or is is going to be a sports lover, something in sports. My dad was a wrestler. I'm, I love boxing, so he might be a swimmer. I don't know, but I know something. Yeah. Something's going to be around because it's my gene, right? Teaching my kids the right things in life. Thank God I've made it so I don't have to work and not spend time with him. Because, you know, when you when you have a eight to three job, you don't have much time for your kids. You just send them to school thinking, yeah, everything's fine. No, it's not. It's not fine. So I don't really want to have a message to the kids as much as I want to have a message to the parents. Spend time with the kids because it's all their fault why some kids can become a bit wobbly. That's what it is, man. All right. I appreciate it, man. Thank you.